Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's video I wanted to share my thoughts on NVIDIA CS presentation last night, the RTX 5000 reveal, what I think of it, the pricing, generational improvements, and the new technologies that were shown based on what I've learned so far about it and give you my thoughts. I wanted to start with DLSS 4 because DLSS more or less changed the industry as we know it and it's only gotten better and better over the years. The latest iteration of it is called DLSS 4 and while the highlight is the multi-frame generation technology which appears to be exclusive to the RTX 5000 series of GPUs, there's actually a lot of other very nice improvements to the DLSS family of technologies as a whole for all RTX users, which is very, very nice. But what is multi-frame generation or MFG? Well, it's in the name. Instead of generating one frame, like on the RTX 4000, it can generate multiple frames, up to three times more. And according to NVIDIA, the reason why Blackwell GPUs can do this is because they've upgraded the display engine, which improves the frame pacing, and also the 5th gen tensor cores allow for a more complex AI algorithm to be able to generate uh, more frames that they claim are high quality. And based on what I've seen, they look pretty good. Although it can be a bit difficult to showcase frame generation on YouTube just because you're dealing with so many frames and capturing all those and showing it on a 60 FPS format, it's a bit challenging. But the launch of DLSS 3 frame generation was actually pretty cool technology. Speaking of which, they've actually made improvements to it. Now, DLSS 3 frame generation, so I will call it the 1x frame generation, has been updated to generate more frames on the RTX 4000 GPUs and even use less VRAM than it did before, which is very nice. Another really cool thing that they showed is that you can now enable multi-frame generation through the NVIDIA app for games that already support frame generation. I'm not sure if it's all of them, but a lot of them can, which is really cool. Another upgrade that DLSS 4 brings for all RTX GPUs, including 2000, is the use of a transformer-based model versus the convolution neural network model that has been used so far, which enhances DLSS super resolution, ray reconstruction, and DLAA by using more tensor processing power on all RTX GPUs to get a cleaner image quality and upscaling or less ghosting and ray reconstruction. DLAA, it's actually really, really cool. Digital Foundry actually did a video previewing the RTX 5080. I'll leave a link down below, but they do go over the new exclusive multiple frame generation, but they also go over these improvements, the DLSS super resolution and ray reconstruction which actually improves the image quality quite a bit, especially the ghost in ray reconstruction, which was definitely visible with path tracing in Cyberpunk. So yeah, to see more of your tensor cores being utilized in your GPU, and this is just an upgrade for all RTX users, that's great. You can update your games with the new transformer model of DLSS super resolution, ray reconstruction, and DLAA through the NVIDIA app which is straightforward enough, no need to swap in and out files or anything like that. Another feature that got an upgrade was Reflex 2. And I'd say that I'm not really all that qualified to talking about this because I'm not really an esports or a competitive player, although reduction in latency is good for everybody, right? But to sum it all up, Reflex 1 reduced latency by around 50%, and Reflex 2 reduces latency by another 50%. So a total of 75% reduction in latency between having Reflex disabled and turning Reflex 2 on in the games where it is supported. Another really cool feature of Reflex 2 is frame warping, which the way I understand it is that it intercepts as a frame is being calculated on your CPU from your mouse input and warps it into your screen much quicker. I'll leave a link to the Reflex 2 video from NVIDIA and DLSS 4 so you guys can look at it yourselves. They do a much better job than me <laughs> explaining it. A few other things worth mentioning that I don't know a whole lot about was RTX Neural Material, which looked like it increases the material quality, but also reduces the asset file size, which sounds really cool actually, but I don't know if this has to be implemented in the game or how it works. And then there was text to animation that they showed. I don't know much about this. And then RTX Neural Faces, which, hey, it looked like a 
pretty realistic face. But I'm not sure if this is stuff aimed at devs mostly. It sounds like it probably is. They also showed a lot of other stuff at the presentation, way beyond gaming. Actually, gaming only made a smaller part of the presentation, but what they showed was really great. The improvements to DLSS 4 overall is great and something we all get to enjoy, whether you buy an RTX 5000 GPU or not, but you do get the multi-frame generation if you did, which other RTX GPUs don't. Now, speaking of GPUs, let's talk hardware. Firstly, pricing, because a lot of people were going crazy with the pricing. There was a lot of leaks going around that the 5080 would be like sixteen or eighteen hundred dollars or something like that. And personally, I stay away from rumors because, well, I don't like to assume things either, because when you assume things, you make an ass out of yourself. And I saw a lot of people do that, actually flipping out over rumors and pricing. You can just wait, guys, and prices are what they are. You either think it's worth it and you buy it or you think it's overpriced and you don't. And there's nothing wrong with that. What something is worth is different from people to people based on many circumstances and preferences and all that stuff. But speaking of the pricing for the RTX 5000, well, I have to give Nvidia credit here for not actually raising the prices or quite the opposite, actually. The 5070 or 5070 Ti will be $50 cheaper than the previous generation of those GPUs. And then the 5080 will be $200 cheaper than the 4080 launched at. The only GPU that got a price increase was actually the 5090 at $1999 versus $1599 for the 4090, the previous generation. So what are the generational improvements then? Well, let's take a look. Let's start by looking at the RTX 5070 and we'll look at this chart provided by Nvidia here. We've got to make sure to read the fine print because Cyberpunk, Alan Wake 2 and Black Myth Wukong actually have MFG enabled, which is the up to times four frame generation exclusive feature of the RTX 50 series, which is a pretty nice feature that I definitely want to look more into, but it's not an apples to apples comparison. Far Cry 6 and the Plague Tale Requiem, however, are. And this is more of what we use to when we compare uh, different generations or even classes of GPU. And this shows about a 20 to 30% increase in performance. I wish we had a rasterization only title as well, but we don't. So we'll go with what we have. And I'd still uh, wait for third party benchmarks just to get a clearer picture and more games. But I would say it's acceptable 30% uh, generational improvement. And it's launching at $50 cheaper. That's not too bad. The RTX 5070 Ti seems to be more or less the same thing. And the same goes for the RTX 5080. And the same almost for the 5090. It is a little bit higher in Plague Tale Requiem, which does have more demanding ray tracing. So I think the 5090 might be a, a bit of a ray tracing beast, I guess you could say. We'll have to wait and see. And it's really the only GPU that would make sense for me to upgrade to because I have an RTX 4090. So I hope you guys didn't sell <laughs> your 4090s for $550 because when they said that the RTX 5070 was equivalent to a 4090, I would not say that. That is far from the actual truth. Maybe in certain scenarios it could match it but not apples to apples settings uh, definitely not but will i be upgrading to the rtx 5090 honestly i don't know because it is quite a steep price i mean i would love to be able to, to benchmark it for you guys and show you how it performs in all the different games and upcoming games there's a lot of games coming up that have ray tracing and path tracing i'm very excited about and the 5090 would be the best of the best so I don't, I don't know if I'm going to get one. I mean, I would like to, but it is a bit steep and not as big of a jump in rasterization or ray tracing performance as it was from the 30 series to the 40 series based off my own benchmarking. I saw up to twice the amount of path tracing performance when I compared my 3080 Ti to the 4090 in Quake RTX, for example, and rasterization was around 60 to 70 percent, um, which is a really, really good generational improvement. But again, this 
this chart doesn't show as much as I'd like to. I'd like to see more games and in due time we are. I would say to wrap this all up, Nvidia's presentation was actually very exciting. They showed a lot of really, really cool stuff, not just gaming, but a lot of other things. If you're into AI, I mean, these cards seem to be built uh, with that in mind. I mean, so was the 40 series, actually 40 series is really good in AI as well. But yeah, these cards take it up to another level. DLSS 4, I was really excited to see what NVIDIA have done with DLSS 4. I mean, not just the exclusive MFG feature for the 50 series, but just overall improving DLSS 4, uh, DLSS Super Resolution, Ray Reconstruction, DLAA, Reflex 2. These are all really nice updates that we all get to enjoy, whether you buy an RTX 5000 GPU or not. That's entirely up to you but what do you guys think leave your comments down below let me know what you thought of the presentation what you think of the new gpus that are coming up and what you think about dlss4 but i will see you guys on the next one thanks for watching i do appreciate it bye bye